It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, if you look on that Sharp Interactive board, you'll see the Conica Minolta logo. I'm asking the question, is Conica positioning to dump U.S. direct operations? I believe absolutely they are, 100%. Underneath that, it says, President, U.S. direct operation leaves the company. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you've all seen the email that went around. It's all over the whole entire industry, where Sam Arrigo had sent out an email announcing that a senior vice president of logistics is retiring in June, and then two other senior leaders quit the company on the same day, the senior vice president of marketing and the president of direct operations. I mean, I thought it was amazing they both quit on the same day. I mean, I think it was, I think it, I could tell you what happened. This is my opinion. I'm thinking that the senior vice president of logistics was in the break room and said, hey, I'm going to retire in the end of June. And the president of the direct operations heard that and said, well, if you're going to retire, I'm going to quit. And then the senior vice president of marketing heard the president of U.S. Direct Operations say that he was going to quit. And she said, well, if you're going to quit, I'm going to quit. They both quit on the same day and the email went out. But ladies and gentlemen, when I went through that email, I found some things in the email that really make me believe they are going to get rid of the direct operations. And I found some things in the email that make me ask some more questions. And at the end of today's episode, I'm going to ask Sam Arrigo, the president of U.S. Operations here for Conica Minolta, if he would send me over some information. I'm getting ready to do the year end for Conica Minolta. You know, their FY 2022 ended March of 2023. The numbers will be out in May. I need some information from Conica so I can put together a really strong presentation going through those numbers because I want to knock it out of the park. And if Conica Minolta would share these numbers with me, then I could knock that presentation out of the park. Because ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm getting close and digging through all these numbers. At the end of the third quarter, I shared some information. You know, I got into these DW and DX and tried to figure out the revenue for the United States and, you know, really digging into that. We're getting close, but I still need some more information. So Sam, stick with today's episode so you can give me that information. But let's talk about this email real quick. So the email goes out. And folks, I just find it ironic that two senior leaders quit on the same day. I mean, uh, because the, what's that an indication of? They're not happy. I mean, I just, I, I was kind of upset about it. And quite honestly, they didn't really say anything in the email about anything these people did that was great. They shared some things about some awards they got. And, you know, the award thing, that's crazy. You know, kind of an older loves the awards. But they didn't really talk about details of what these people actually accomplished while they were there. You know, maybe that's why they quit. They couldn't get anything accomplished. So they said, we're out of here. Or maybe, maybe it really went the other way. They couldn't get things accomplished. And the kind of coming old, the leadership said, you're out of here. We'll never really know the real reason why they left. But it is kind of strange that two people would quit on the same day. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's look at this. So in the email, it said year over year revenue improvements. And I'm thinking to myself, where's, where's the talk about the profit? There's no talk about the profit, the whole email. It talks about year over year revenue improvements, but we know our industry loves to chase revenue at all costs. And in Conica's case, <laughs> just look at the numbers over the last couple of years. You could tell they're spending a whole lot of money to chase the revenue, which is killing their operating profit. So I was kind of a little upset that I didn't see anything about the operating profit. The other thing that was said is we'll drive greater alignment with our go to market strategy. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if the direct, if the president of the direct operations is no longer with a company, what better way to align the strategy than to get rid of the direct operations? No leader, no division to lead. Makes a lot of sense. It's a perfectly aligned strategy. That's what makes me believe they're going to get rid of all the direct operations. The other thing that was in this email is short-term Sam will work directly with channel leaders to accelerate our DX business and strategic direction. This was a little bit kind of weird. It's a little bit concerning to actually. But I'm thinking, you know, Sam, he's got this whole entire, this whole company to run here in the United States, right? He's the president of the United States marketplace. And now he's got to be out there selling the workplace hub. He's taking over the DX business, strategic direction. Here's what I'll tell you. You're more than welcome to come on the end of the day with Ray. I'd love to have Sam on the Big Sharp Interactive TV. I could sit here at this table and he could tell the whole entire industry because a lot of people watch the end of the day with Ray. I mean, even people that work at Conica could learn this. But what exactly the DX business strategic direction is. We know that Workplace Hub's been out around for a long, long time. But what's really going on with that? What's really going on with All Covered? Could you imagine us having this conversation? Let's dig into the details of All Covered. God, it would be so exciting. And I know a lot of people would watch that show, you know. But we'd have to have real specifics. We don't want to just throw a bunch of adjectives out there. It'd have to be really, really detailed. But you're always welcome to come, Sam. Always welcome. Let's go back a little bit. 
and then I'll get to the list of stuff I need from Sam. So we all know that FY 2021 and FY 2020, we had $294 million worth of operating losses, those two years combined. Coming into FY 2022, it was a pretty, pretty disgusting, scary story, to be honest with you, from an operating profit. We started to pick up a little bit in FY 2022. We ended nine months in 2022 with a 0.5% operating profit for the whole entire company. Yeah, that wasn't 5%. That was 0.50%, like half of 1%, which is really, really bad. I mean, that's nothing to, to brag about, but it's above the line. I mean, you don't want to be keep losing hundreds of millions of dollars, but that was on $6.2 billion in total revenue. But ladies and gentlemen, remember when I really dug through that DWDX and I'm really trying to get this figured out, right? This is why I need Konica's help because if they would give me the information I'm asking for, man, I'm telling you, the presentation on their year for FY 2022 would be awesome. I mean, it would be the most detailed presentation of any OEM in the marketplace. And I know the marketplace would love this kind of stuff. So I'm, tr I'm trying to sell, you know, Konica Minolta's leadership on getting me this information. If y'all are wondering why I keep talking about that, because, you know, you got to sell these folks sometimes. They really don't want to do this. I'm trying to sell them the benefits of doing it. So let's go over here and let's look at the print business for the nine months. I can't wait for the year-end numbers to hit the streets in May, but for the nine months in, we had a total of $4.7 billion in total revenue. We had an operating profit of $96.7 million, or 2%. That's a whole lot better than no percent, <laughs> but here's the problem. If you look at the digital workplace, the digital workplace had $3.3 billion worth of revenue, nine months, and they have zero operating profit. They only had, percentage, excuse me, they had $11.4 million in operating profit on $3.3 billion in revenue. That's not good. And we all know that in that digital workplace, that's where the all covered piece, all this IT services stuff lives. We also know that really successful IT services companies all through 2022, all through 2021 for the most part, were really killing it. They were doing some great things. They were able to raise prices to their end users. They were able to go out there and get fee-based security assessments, all kinds of stuff. Revenues were going off the chart, right? Along with profitability for the really disciplined, well-run companies. But ladies and gentlemen, I have to be honest with you, maybe this will inspire Konica Minolta to get me this information so I can put all this together, especially if the information is gonna make them look really, really strong in IT. Because without the information, this is gonna sound a little tough, but it is tough. Konica Minolta's all covered reminds me of Visual Edge. And we all know what's going on at Visual Edge. Through October of last year, that BDC credit reporter, Loan and non-accrual, a CCR5 credit rating. And over the last six months, Austin or no one on that team has bothered to come into the marketplace and share where they're at today. They're still kind of hiding behind all of that, which makes me believe that there's not a whole lot of good stuff to share. And I don't want that to happen to Konica Minolta. If Konica Minolta would get into the details that I'm asking them to get into, I think, I think they could really do some wonderful things. But unfortunately, if they keep ignoring it and they keep ignoring the realities of sharing these numbers, it makes me think that it's really just another visual edge. And I hope that motivates you to really dig into this and help me out to explain this to the marketplace. So let's think about this a little bit. All Covered bought 16 companies before Konica Minolta bought them. I don't believe All Covered can run as a business organically. I just don't believe they can. They ran around, they bought 16 companies the three years prior to Konica Minolta buying them. Since Konica Minolta owned them, they bought another 24 companies. The question is, and I'm going to ask it, can Konica Minolta grow all covered organically? I believe the answer would be absolutely no, they can't. Because if they could, they'd be bragging about it. We all know they would. Could they really take these 24 acquisitions and the 16 companies that were bought prior to them buying all covered, could they really get all this stuff integrated right? to go out in the marketplace with a, with a comprehensive deliverable that people can understand and sell in the market? I don't believe it's possible. I believe that the all covered thing is a big old weight on Konica Minolta and they can call it DW, DX, they can call it whatever they want, but I'm thinking about this ERP system they bought. I mean, really? So now let's jump right into this questions and stuff. This is a question, this is stuff I need from Konica Minolta's leadership. Get me this stuff so I can put it together and put it in my presentation for your FY 2022 presentation. I need the U.S. and Canada direct operations revenue and profitability. Get that to me. 
Here's the revenue, here's the profitability of the direct operations in Canada, the United States. All covered revenue and profit for each entity within the portfolio. Wouldn't that be awesome? Here's all these companies, here's what's happened since we bought them. Some of them probably went away and were dissolved, who knows, but put all that in there. Here's where this is going. Here's the same store sales, if you will. That would be so exciting to make part of my FY 2022 presentation. How many dealers are still on Forza? So there's a rumor out there there's less than seven. If there's less than seven people still on the Forza platform, how in the world is that anything worth keeping? Seriously. I mean, you just, this, is, this is where the nuts and bolts get into because if you really had to share these details, you'd be, you'd be putting this thing together for me. You'd say, yeah, then we got to get rid of this thing. What is the head count for all covered? You know, during 2022, there was a lot of speculation out there, a lot of rumors about a lot of people leaving all covered. Let's clarify those rumors. How many people left all covered in 2022? Who's on all covered today? Is all covered's human capital growing? Are you getting better people in the mix? What's going on with the human capital component of all covered? That's important to know. Because like I said, really successful IT services companies grew quite substantially during the global pandemic and the year following. They're growing really great because the customers realize they need these services and they're willing to pay. And, and a lot of MSPs were able to move upstream and stuff. Because we don't want you out there doing kind of what Visual Edge talked about how they do it, selling $1,000 and $1,500 service contracts, putting little value at all on any kind of fee-based assessments. Of course, they got loaned a non-accrual at a CCR5 rating, and I don't want that to happen to Conica. So these are some important things that I need from you. Hopefully, you can get those to me. You know, you can find my email at, well, you know where to get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me here around the end of the day with Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see you all tomorrow.